Hey guys, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. How is everybody doing today? Uh, let's get right into it because we are joined today all the way from uh, Los Angeles, California. I think you're in Los Angeles this at this moment. Uh, Ali Ashori, as seen on Shaws of Sunset. How are you? Hi, how are you? Glad to be here. Are Are you in Los Angeles? I'm just assuming you I am, are. I'm in West Hollywood. I mean, I am in Los Angeles, but I live in West Hollywood. <laughs> You're quarantining, and you have this lovely painting behind you. Yeah, I try to have like some scenic, um, fun, you know, like scene because you know we're, we're Persians, we have to have some nice backdrop. <laughs> That's a very nice backdrop. I, I can never tell if I have good lighting. It always starts out good. And by the end of it, I'm always like, I can barely see myself. So what have you been doing during quarantine? Anything exciting? Well, I've been actually working on some stuff, some projects. Yeah. Um, that I just, you know, wanted to like actually share with you guys because I think it's, um, it's fun to talk, you know, what I'm about to do. So, um, I have some really fun videos I'm going to post on my YouTube channel that I just created. And it's going to be really funny, really relatable to all the people in quarantine. Um, and it'll be like short 30 minute videos of like some, some series that I'm going to create and with my friends. And it's going to be super fun. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm still developing the channel, but um, um, I'm working on that. That's like something that's giving me like, you know, something to do while in quarantine and you know trying to make time go by faster and more fun you're using your time wisely are you quarantined by yourself i mean i'm by myself so no yeah, judgment I'm there i'm by myself yeah <laughs> it's interesting right it's like i don't know there are days i love it and then there are days i'm like what the fuck is going on here yeah some days that are really tough some days that are that go by quickly like you know like last week i felt like it went quickly don't you think so? It did this week, not so much. Like this week I had like yeah. a bad day or two where I'm just like, I think everyone I know had like a bad day or two this week. I don't know. There's like something in the air. Yeah, it's it's actually like, actually, you know what? I think I'm losing you. Let me switch my Wi-Fi. Okay. One second. I know. There's been like issues with, and everyone understands who is listening to this. There's been. Okay, you, I'm back. Do you see me? I can see you perfectly. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay, yes. guys. Sorry. Um. So now, where are you from? Like, you're not. Are you originally from Los Angeles, or? No, I I was born in Tehran, and I moved oh. to Chicago when I was ten. Um. I I came with my mom and sister. Uh, my mom actually just you know kind of we escaped from my dad. Um. He was kind. He was abusive and just was not a nice person, and so we left. Um. Tehran when I was 10 I didn't speak any English when I got here um we moved to Chicago as when we when we I grew up in Chicago in the suburbs of Chicago and then um I moved to LA June will be six years that I've been in LA for six years wow like do you have memories like before 10 of being in Tehran or really? oh yeah I remember yeah. it yeah yeah and I was back um I was back in 2007 and it's it had changed from what I remember too, as a as a kid, to when I was, you know, after um, after school, like after finishing college, I went back, and it was really different. Like everything has changed, and even I mean now I I can't imagine like what's changed. It's even like so westernized. Like what do you remember of it back then? I mean I think I drink way too much vodka. I don't remember anything yeah. like. <laughs> I don't know. I have very few memories before 10. Like, I don't know what is going on. But no, I mean, what do you remember? I remember I was in school. I was in, um, like, I, I was in fifth grade when I left Iran. So I remember all my, you know, school days with my, like, with my friends in school and in the school bus. Like, I mean, I remember all of that. And I remember, um, obviously, at home and, like, hanging out with my sister and our cousins would come and we would play. I mean, like, I remember the streets, like the car rides. We'd go to the airport to pick up my grandma from, you know, when she would come back from the US. So I remember all that. Wow. And then how did you decide to move from Chicago to LA? Like, why'd you decide LA? So I mean, there are I, worse places to be. I, I mean, Chicago is so cold. And I literally, it was after, um, that the massive blizzard that we had one year and I just was like I can't take this anymore 
Um, it's literally like, you know, I would go outside wearing two different coats and I'm, you know, driving my car and my car is like, says I'm going zero miles an hour. And I know that's not true. <laughs> so it's bad in Chicago. It's pretty bad. Like, so I just was like, you know what? If no, I just don't want to be here anymore and I can't deal with this. Can I, can I? Can I swear on your podcast? <laughs> you can say anything you want here. This is a safe space. You can swear. You can say anything you want. We have a lot to get into. We're going to talk about the shirt you're wearing as well. Don't think I didn't notice that. I like notice at all. I, I notice that at all. Um, well, New York is pretty damn cold too. But I mean, I guess not as bad as Chicago to that. No, effect. yeah, it's it's a lot. Like in Chicago, it's um it's really windy and it's really miserable. <laughs> and I love the city. I love love Chicago so much. Like it's I grew up there. It's always going to be home. Um, it's just the weather sucks. And if I if we get let's say like if you had LA's weather in Chicago, Chicago would be the perfect city to live in. Like it's just literally the perfect city. It's it's big enough and small enough. Um, people you know, are nice. People, people are nice. Are nice. There. People are nice. The good transportation. Um, traffic is not so bad. You know. Now, yes, I do know. Now, so when you were in Chicago, so Shaw's started when you were in Chicago, then, right? I think it's yeah. You only, it was six years ago. So, I mean, I've talked to other people of Persian descent. So, like, were you like when this was? like being cast like did you hear about it or the first time you heard about it was like when it actually was up on tv no i did i did hear about it it was some article that i read that ryan seacrest was producing the show and i just i remember reading it and i was talking about it and at work with my coworkers. and then um the show came on like a year later after they had cast like obviously the the show and and then i started watching from season one um i just you know thought that it was cool that uh, my culture is being put on display um not necessarily everything that's put on display is necessarily like what every persian person would do let's say <laughs> yes uh, uh, but you know there's it's, you know it's uh, it's put a light on us in a, in a in a positive way that um necessarily before wasn't there let's say like you know the media would always talk negatively about iran and the government and you know, people were getting, you know, didn't get um, the mass, um, you know, the mass, um, what is it, like the... the exposure. Yes, yeah, the mass, thank you. It's a mass exposure See? that the show gave uh, gave the Persian community. Um, so that was all very nice and it was really nice to see. So you were happy, like, even, like, the first season, like, even with all the drama and craziness? Because it was, you had its drama even in the first season. Like, you were happy with the portrayal. You weren't like, yeah. oh, God, this is being portrayed, like. Listen, it's a show, and it's, like, you have to just look at, like, you know, you want a show that's entertaining. Um, if the Persian culture is very, very, um, like, formal, and everybody's very polite, if you have a show like that, it's just not going to work. You know what I mean? If you have, like, you know, every, I mean, I, there's a way that you have to talk to your elders and you just have to be very formal and very nice. And, and it's a very, very um, nice culture. Everybody's super, like, and treats everybody with so much respect and that's how it should be. Like, that's part of the show. It's been necessarily, like, not the same. But it doesn't take away from the, you know, authenticity of, of the culture. So you could still see through the, art, the interactions of the cast that everyone is, you know, it's kind of like a family unit and everybody's, you know, supporting each other. And that's how the culture is. So um, that's, that's, you know, but you can't have a show that's going to be, you know, I'm going to be so formal to you and be not say the F word or whatever. Like, you know, I just, it, it can't work like that. <laughs> well, and if you did, I don't think it would be on the Bravo network. That might not be the right network for that type of show. Yes. Um, so you moved to LA now. Are you like a practicing PharmD? I saw on your Instagram. Like, do you still work? Yes, I'm. I'm a working pharmacist. Um, I, I'm doing administrative work right now, but I am a pharmacist, and um, I have been a pharmacist for eleven years now. Oh so, wow! Yeah, I, I'm. You know, I know. I'm very experienced with my job, and it's something that I love doing. It's something that I want to do. Was being healthcare and um, try to be, you know, like in a position where I can help people and I can just, you know, I know it says cliche, but it, it's really rewarding for me when I'm helping a customer, you know, one of my patients that, 
is you know sick and you know needs to get their medication and is looking for me to get better and I can be I can be the link from the doctor's office to that um, patient and try to help accommodate them and try to make their medication give their medications and try to support them and if they have any questions and you know just be there for them I think the healthcare professional I mean, pharmacists in are the most accessible healthcare professionals and we're accessible 24 7 by everybody so um and, you know we get all sorts of questions you have to be well versed in your in in your profession to be able to help a broad range of um, patients that have serious concerns and questions and that's you know uh, i would work in retail for i was out, outpatient um, retail pharmacist for uh, 10 years now so oh wow yeah you know, Interesting. So you moved to LA, you were doing that, you're doing some other things. So how did you meet up with anyone in the group of Shaws that you see on TV? It's, it's, it was just kind of like, it just happened. I met, I became friends with Adam. Um, we, we were at a, um, we were at a, like a friend's birthday dinner and he, it was like nine people there. And he was one of the, one of the, one of the guests that was there. And I, started talking to him and became friends on Facebook and you know that was you know the rest is history and I became friends with everybody else through Adam. So Adam was your link so Adam was dating Reza even at that time? They were married yeah. Okay yeah. So that was really I would not have predicted that Adam would have been your first so were you just like so that's kind of shocking like to meet Adam at first and yet he's like connected to all these Persians yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Weird. It's, it's just, I mean, it just, LA is so big too. And I just kind of, it just kind of happened. But, you know, but again, like in the gay community, it's, it's smaller. So, um, and it was one of my, you know, friends um, in the community that had a birthday. And it was just, he, I think um, my friend was training Adam at the time. So he was a personal trainer. And that's how I became friends with Adam. Yeah. And then did you start hanging out with like him and Reza or was it like the whole group or like who did you kind of hang out with in the group the most or? Well, it was kind of like um, at first, like, OK, so this is how it all ha like we became friends on Facebook and then we, were, we weren't really hanging out for a couple of years after that. So I would say like two, three years went by that we weren't really friends. We're just like Facebook friends. That um, happens. Yeah. And then I like posted. Um, I <laughs> I posted a um, like a like a shirtless selfie of me like after the gym or whatever. Which you do because I've looked at your Instagram. You have listen. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> you know, so I posted one of those pictures and like Adam messaged me and was like, "Hey, what are you doing? Let's you know, I want to like like do you want to hang out or whatever?" And I was like, "Okay, yeah, whatever." Like he's, he seemed like a cool guy. Like when I met him, like yeah, what do you like? What's up or whatever. And then we like that weekend. I went into a trip with um, with MJ and Reza and Adam to Palm Springs, and that's how I met MJ. Is when we went to that trip. Okay. And it was like a weekend trip to Palm Springs, and you know we all just you know just it was um, it was whose birthday was it? I think it was Adam's birthday. Oh no, it, yeah, it was Adam's birthday actually. It was his birthday weekend. And he invited me to go with them to Palm Springs, and so we went. And it was really fun. We all got along. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's good. Now, I mean, did you, so he was married to Reza at the time. Like, did you think it was like, did you think it was weird that he kind of just messaged you and said, let's meet up? I, and even though I, he was married. I don't, I don't, I didn't think anything of it. Like I was just kind of like, whatever, you know, I like, message you all the time. So I didn't think anything of it, you know? Well, that's what happens when you post shirtless <laughs> selfies. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Again, there's nothing wrong with this. And married people can have friends too, so that's okay. Yeah, guys, no, absolutely. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> so you just kind of like fell into the group. So now, and then you just were hanging out with them. So, I mean, then sometimes they were filming, you know, because this whole claim of Reza's of like, you know, like you're a fame whore and then they show you in like in the right. background of like seven scenes so like what's that all about no, i mean they, they, listen he's gonna say whatever he wants to say and i you know he's entitled to his opinions and that's fine like i wasn't i literally it was all of my relationships with with everyone on the cast was authentic and i had good friendships with everybody so i just didn't i didn't think anything i didn't think i mean it, i when i'm as a viewer when i'm watching what is being shown and 
I mean, it does look like that, but whatever. Like, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm, I'm, they're trying, you know, I'm that guy, whatever. So I don't care. But I mean, like, you weren't even, it's not like you were trying to get on TV. You were just at the party Um, having fun. Right. I was, you know, I was at the events and I was with my friends and we were just hanging out and there happened to be cameras. (laughs) Totally. I mean, that makes sense. I, I, I totally understand that. And then what about, so now the show is on, like, there's a lot going on on the show. What about like Gigi? Do you know her very well? I mean, she's pregnant now, so that's good. Like, yeah, no, she's going to be an an amazing mom. I have, um, nothing negative to say about her. You know, it's, it's, um, we have our issues um, that I can't really talk about, but we'll just you know have to see and watch and see what happens. Um, but I don't have anything negative about her to say to her about her. Um, she did help. My mom is sick and she has a, uh, a neurodegenerative disease that um, doesn't have good prognosis, and it's very sad to see my mom go through this process and. Um, that's one of the reasons me and MJ got really close is because her dad um, obviously had um, health issues and we just bonded through that because we love our mom. I love my mom and she loves her dad very much and we just bonded on that level that I haven't bonded with anybody else and we became really, really, really close um, just through that and my mom is, you know, thankfully she's still with us but um, it's just really difficult to see her go through this process and what um the reason i'm bringing this up is that uh Gigi's mom is i love her i love her so much i love I have so much respect for her she's an amazing woman and so Gigi put me in contact with her mom to see if there is a treatment that i can take my mom to mexico um and that's what i did i went i took my mom to mexico for a treatment um to that it's not offered in U.S. in the U. in, in New, it's it's a stem cell treatment that's not offered in the U.S. and I took my mom there twice and my mom responded positively to the treatment but it didn't that's cure her. Um, so that I'm always really appreciative of that of what Gigi's done for me and you know and and I'm putting me in contact with her mom and her mom being so so nice and supportive. Um, I really have so much respect for her mom. So I don't want and you know obviously. We have our differences and whatever, but it's not something that I'm going to go and talk negatively about her and, you know. I didn't even know you had your differences. And I'm sorry to hear about your mom. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe we'll see those differences on the show or I because mean, so far we haven't seen anything. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you'll see them. I don't know. <laughs> There's still, I think, a lot of the season left. Um, now, what about... These are things you can talk about. I know there's a lot that you can't talk about. You told me before you came on, but I appreciate, you know, we're just having a friendly little chat. But yeah. these are things you can talk about because these people are not on the show anymore. So, like, do you know, like, Asifa, Lily Galici? Um, I don't know Asifa. I, I actually, I met Asifa's husband, Bobby, um, at an event. But that's, like, I just met him once. Um, I never met Asifa. Lily, I never met. Um and Asa, I don't know. I was so, gonna ask you about Asa. Yeah. Cause I became, I became friends with the, everybody in the group like season seven, um, season six actually, season six, right? When the, it was airing, season six was airing and that's what the whole baby drama with um, Asa and MJ and all of that was happening. Um, that's when I became friends with everybody. So that was like, what, like four years ago? Because everything is filmed a year before, so. Right. And then is, because, you know, you mentioned the gay community, like in West Hollywood is very small. I would say the gay community in New York City is just as small. Like is the gay gay world, like where everyone in in the gay world is very small. One knows each other. (laughs) Everyone knows everyone else. People don't believe this. And you go somewhere and you're like, oh, I know like half of New York is right here right now. Like, I don't know how this happened. Like, what about like, is the Persian community that way in L.A.? We're like, I mean, regardless of the show, like where everyone kind of knows everyone ish. Everyone kind of knows everyone and talks about everyone and has an opinion about everyone. So it's kind of like if I like, let's say I'm sitting at like, I don't know, I'm walking by and I like fart it. Like it will be passed on to like the next person, next person, next person. And it'll be like, oh, my God, Ali just had diarrhea in front of me. Like it'll it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Like it's not just like, you know, like rumors pass by and it's just 
everyone just loves, loves to talk about everything. And then, like, and everyone has an opinion. It's just... Really? And what about, like, what do people think of the show, like, in the Persian community in L.A.? Are they, like same as you like i'm so glad we're on tv being represented or are they like oh my god this is so much fucking drama we're not we're not all that much drama all the yeah, time honestly i don't know because my all my persian friends that i'm friends with are like the the cast so i don't know what other persian people are talking about um because i just try not to like tune into it i get like messages all the time like on instagram and stuff and some people like are very supportive um you know and Obviously, the viewership for this season has has doubled from last season, so um, it's, you know, catching on again, like season two and season three when it was really popular, so I think it's, you know, it's great. It's great for the show. Um, I don't know what, um, you know, I know that my family watches it, my my sister's friends watches it. Um, They're all really excited, and they think it's, you know, fun. Um, they think it's like the it's very entertaining and that's and that's the goal of the show obviously to be entertaining and try to have um, especially in these times these difficult times that we are all living totally we, we need to have some distraction <laughs> totally I, I I would agree with that and I yes I think this is one of the better seasons in a very long time but now like since you you know you're featured more in this season really than ever before for yourself like have you seen? like a difference like in your social media like in dms do people yeah, recognize I, you when you yeah, go out it, yeah i've got some followers i mean it's not like extreme um uh i it's it's hard because the, you don't get to see me on the show as with my personality i don't have in, you know interviews and i don't have you know you don't I, I can't be like shady and funny and like all that stuff which i'm very you know that i love doing that because i think it's fun but like I can't do that, and like the, the viewers don't get to see that, so it's hard. Like I'm just the shit star right now, and, and I started a lot of shit. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did, you did. Now I mean, look, we've all been there that are you know in the public eye or semi in the public eye. Like, do you have you gotten like the haters? Like, because I mean, I get um, my haters. Yeah, yeah, the haters are there. <laughs> like they just slip into your DMs and they're like, you fucking whatever yeah, they call me thirsty and like i don't care like whatever call me thirsty all you want right like the haters. there's a lot there's a lot that's not shown on the show and there's a lot that people don't know about my relationship with 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 everybody so i and i know myself and i know my my truth and you know my personality and everything so i don't really care it doesn't bother me that's uh, good yeah that's but there's good. a lot of people there's a lot of people sending me positive comments too and like positive notes and DMs and like messages and you know it's it's nice it's 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 a diff- it's it's actually you know it's fun like I was right re- before all the lockdown happened I was out and I was recognized on the street which I was like totally crazy. <laughs> they were like, oh my god, you're from Shaw's and yeah. you're the one that was doing this and that. That's funny. Yeah, and it's unexpected because I'm not in this. I'm not in entertainment. I'm not in. Um, I'm in healthcare. So it's. It's, it's it's fun to see that like it's fun to see like you know like somebody like wants to like talk to me because because of me I was on TV and it's just whatever it's fun right and yeah. and like also like the thing about the haters is they'll never come up to you in person never it's all a bunch of like scared trolls in someone's basement yeah and they'll never do it to your face because they don't have the fucking balls and I think some of these trolls um are like from people we know. Yes, exactly. Right. That's the other thing. There's these fucking fake accounts that, yeah. like, well, that's easy to come after someone with a fake account. I mean, uh, trust me, I get it. Um, so that's good. So what about, like, talk about some other people, just, you know, like, in terms of your relationships, like, what about Shervin? I love Shervin. He's he's a great guy, and we get along uh, great, and he's he's funny. He makes me laugh. I make him laugh. He's a great guy. And what about Nima and Mona? That's a, she's a fellow pharmacist. RMD. Yes. Yeah, um, well, she's not practicing pharmacist, so she's. Um, that's true. Right, but she is a pharmacist. She's a PharmD, obviously, um, and that's mad respect to her because I know what she went through to get that degree and get that license. Um, so I don't, um, I, I don't really interact with Mona, um, to be honest. Uh, and she Nima, lives in New York now too. Yeah, oh, I, I see. I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, no, I like spoke to her like a few weeks. She's like, I mean, she's really smart. Yes. 
drop dead gorgeous and she moved to New York. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see I didn't even know that. Right. So um so I thought she was still here, but see that's the you know Well you can't keep up with everyone, you know. Yeah, and um Nima and I are fine. We ha- um we haven't talked um since the text from Reza that said you can't be friends with everybody. So I haven't talked to him since that that day. So um, I don't have I don't have any ill feelings towards him. He's he's great. He's funny. Um, you know, he tries to be the peacemaker in the group and try to make everybody be friends with everyone. And I think um, um, some people, you know, took him for granted and you know just mistreated him this season. But I think that he he can hold his own. You know, he has he's very good with his words and. That's true. Um, yeah, I don't. I I don't have any like. I like Nima. Nima's, you know, not a like. He hasn't done anything to me. That's but I was, I was honestly disappointed because I was good friends with him. Um, I did consider him my really one of my good friends. And um, when Reza said that he can't be friends with me, it just hurt my feelings. You know. I mean, I don't blame you. So I mean, for everyone who is living under a rock or not watching Shaw's, just to quickly quickly recap oh, I need a for this. I'm gonna you're like <laughs> you take a drink I'm, i've just drank all this coffee in front Are of you, you, as you could say. i'm drinking wine put some like put a shot of vodka in your coffee i love see too bad i'm not there with you and we're not quarantining together because i love someone that wants to have a drink at 10 26 and- <laughs> listen it's, it's a happy hour somewhere right I don't mean like I'm not calling you out. It's 126 here, but here, cheers. So I'll I'll put a little shot in here. So yeah. cheers to that. Is this well, you know, most of my friends have really doubled down on their drinking now in quarantine. Oh my god. It's like I don't drink ever, but like now that you you're in quarantine, like what you know, I need a drink. <laughs> See, I'm the opposite. I drink so much <laughs> when I'm out. I'm like I'm such a social drinker and I go out. I go out like pretty much all the time, you know, yeah. not out like just, but like well, any- not anymore. <laughs> no, not anymore. Everyone is like, somehow no one thought I'd be able to survive. Like people were like, you're the most social person we know. But like, I mean, what choice do I have? You know, but th- I've been like too depressed to even drink, like not even depressed. Oh, anymore. Really? Okay. Well, not like depressed, like not depressed, but just like no desire more like i want to drink i want to go out to the bar with like all my yeah. friends and drink i miss i miss drinking and being social with my friends i mean i'm sitting on like you know video chats and we're drinking virtually with each other and it's like and then three hours later you're like oh my god i just drank two bottles of wine by myself <laughs> What's going but on? you're drinking white wine that doesn't really count it's like so i, I mean, have yeah <laughs> it's uh, it's in the morning so <laughs> just wake up or are you like an early riser no i had stuff to do so i've been up for a while me too i wake up early i started this like online boot camp which i'm doing like at 6 a.m now oh that's good well it isn't i don't really enjoy home workouts i hate it right kind of right but like our gym because i have a gym in my building like they stayed open to the very and then like the state was just like there's no buildings that could keep a gym open and so like the state mandated all like new york building gyms because it's like a private gym just for the apartment building but like yeah and then like the first four weeks of quarantine i was just like fuck this like a home workout is shit i'm not doing it but then after four weeks i'm like this is unacceptable so yeah well i mean everybody's kind of like taking i think it's the um COVID-15 <laughs> or 30, <laughs> we're going to gain that, like, until this is done. I can't wait to, like, just walk. Like, after this, I'm not taking cabs anymore. I'm just going to walk everywhere just for the sake of walking. Like, wherever we're going to appreciate are, life differently, like, when we get our lives back. It's, I think is you know, if and when we get it back. And I think there's going to be a lot of changes, too. I think um, what this um, virus has done has made us be a little more you know, antisocial. And I think that's going to stay. I think that's going to, that aspect of it, like kind of being standoffish with each other because you don't know what the other person has or, you know, that's that's like a, a, a main concern now. Um, so even with a, with a vaccine, you don't know where everyone's going to get the vaccine and who is going to be protected. So there's going to be that whole anti-vaxxer is, you know, coming around saying we don't like to have vaccines. 
You don't hear them talking much lately. <laughs> no. Maybe now they'll be like, guess what? I'll take a vaccine. Yeah, where are those anti-vaxxers? <laughs> but, like, what you think, like, people are not going to want to... Yeah, see, like, that depresses me even more. It's the after effects. So, what, you think, like, people are not going to want to, like, hug hello? Like, I like to yeah, hug. I think like a, a handshake and handshakes and hu- kisses, like, on cheeks and stuff is just all going to go away because we, 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 human, humans are... We're, animals of nature, you know, nature, right? So we are like, we, everything that you do becomes a habit. So I think after a whole long time of not doing that, it's just going to be a habit for us not to offer a handshake and when this becomes okay, because I don't think it's going to go back to that um, before Corona days, but I, you just, I mean, I hope to God that, you know, if we do go back to those days that we are more appreciative and we respect our planet and <clears throat> we are, um, you know, just cognizant of each other and how what it, things that we took for granted and how everything to, was taken away from us so quickly. Uh, it's really, opening. you know, it's, it's just kind of like how life is so fragile and how our world is, um, you could, one little virus has literally brought the world to its knees. So kind of, it's scary. And like, I mean, I love to hug. So like, if I can't hug someone, hello, that's depressing, but hopefully also like people won't be in their phones anymore and like if you're out with someone you'll be more appreciative of like just be thrilled that you're sitting here with another human being like be in the moment don't worry about your phone like but yeah we are creatures of habit like i mean i've even had moments of being like happy like oh i'm like used to being inside now like this isn't so bad so it's like it's almost freaky it's like a whole like bell curve of like right all right well now it's like i'm just used to this like oh yeah exactly so it doesn't it, it's not as hard anymore i don't think like four weeks in you're like it's, all right <laughs> it's gotten easier yes i really it's gotten easier now, okay, so you have your wine, take another sip, take a big sip of your wine. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, that's good. Good boy, good boy. Ali is taking a huge <laughs> sip of his wine. So, okay, now just so people, just for those who don't know, so like really... I guess all the drama involving you and just Reza and MJ, it's all because you, with Destiny, went to this restaurant to confront Reza about things that Adam has sent you, which you said was made you feel sexually harassed or was sexual harassment. And MJ apparently, well, not even apparently, we just saw on TV that she basically admitted that. Uh, This is up to what we've seen, so I don't know what's happened since then. She admitted that she did this and kind of encouraged you that if you were having these feelings that you should confront Reza about this. And then you went with Destiny, which that's a whole nother story, to speak to Reza. And then you had a drink thrown in your face by Reza. So, right? That's kind of a very broad overview. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you must have been shocked when you had this drink thrown in your face. I mean, TV or no TV. I I obviously, like, I I went there just to go, you know, tell him the information that I had and I was very calm. I, I mean, I I normally would react, but that scene, I was just like, you know, like he's just gonna lose his, you know, he lost his shit, and I let him lose it because I was in power. And you know, when I was not doing anything, he looked like an idiot. Like he just was like, you know, throwing it, like a drink at me, at assaulting me, which I didn't press charges. You know, I could have. Yeah. I mean, I should have, but I didn't. Um, I um, I don't know. It's just kind of like, you know, all of this is was happening, and I was just like, keep, keep calm, keep calm. Like, I, you know, it happened all so fast too, and I just, you know, I just kind of like didn't even know what to do at that point. But I mean, prior to all of this, like, so you met Adam. After you posted a shirtless selfie and he slipped into your DMs and then you became friends. So, but like, what was your relationship like with Adam and Reza and or Adam and Reza? Like before all? We were just all friends. Like, I wasn't really that close with Reza. We would were, we were like not really talk every day. I mean, we weren't really text that much either. But I was really good friends with Adam. We were text every day. Um, and then I was really good friends with MJ. We were text every day. So, it was just like... We were just friends, you know what I mean? 
And so what Adam, so these texts, I mean, what did they say? <laughs> well, I can't really talk about that. You guys, you guys have to see, watch and see that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Allie, I, I, I like, I like butter you off. I'll buy you your drinks. I'll buy you dinner. And then when I take you home, mama wants some here. So you see how I flip in these little questions, but you don't want to talk about what they say. Um, I, you have to just wait and see, but it is, it is, they're very, they're very sexual text messages. Like, I mean, I spoke about it before. Um, it's very sexual text in, in nature. They were, you know, they're like, let's just say this, like they would make me feel uncomfortable to the point where I was like, okay, this, my friend, my friend is, um, saying all these negative things about me as a joke because of my choices in life. Like I, what I'm trying to do, what I'm, whoever I'm, whatever I'm trying to do or whatever, like, you know, like, like I'm single, I can do whatever I want. Right. Um, yeah. and judge me for my decisions and say that I'm, um, you know, like a, like, like a, like a slut and a whore and all this stuff. I like try to slut shame me with these messages and they were like very sexual in nature. Um, like, like, explicit uh porn messages like you know, like in, like memes and gifts and like and it would make it personal it would be like do you want this like do you want is this what you want like is, is this you getting you know fucked last night and i'm like hey like that's just like i don't talk to my fuck buddies like that right like, just like really really super weird i don't want to talk about you know talk to you like that like why are you telling why are you asking me these like like very specific specific personal text messages or text like questions that you're asking me and i'm like you know is this a, and it's all under the pretense of a joke so there's a fine line with joking you have a very very uh, good sense of humor at first it was funny uh but then when you get like five or six of those messages a day and like try to degrade you it's not funny anymore you know what i mean and it gets to the point where you're like, okay, enough. Like, I don't want to get this. I don't want to wake up to my phone in the morning and have porn sent to me being like, you want this? Is this you getting fucked last night? Like, that's just, like, really, really uncomfortable. Um, and I felt that the, the, the tone of the messages were not in a friendly way. It, it was fine at first. Like, and then it turned in, like, aggressively more and more um, to the level where it just become, became unacceptable. And I had to, you know, I, I told him multiple times that I'm not, you know, I, I don't like these text messages, just stop sending them to me, but it was always in person. Like, I never, like, texted that to him, right? Because I was always talking to him in person. I'm like, because I think if this in this nature, especially in this, like, situation, if you talk in person, it's better versus, like, the, the translation is missed if you text somebody that. So that's why there's no, like, text exchange of me saying stop. There is one um, specific one that I have actually. I was like, okay, stop. It's not cool. And a text message. And then he stopped. But then he would stop and then start again like three or four days later. It would just be like one and uh, like ongoing situation over and over and over. And I'm like, okay, I just can't deal with this anymore. Um, it's not cool. And then we had a falling out. And then like everything stopped because of the falling out. But not because of uh, I told him to stop texting me. That's why you had the falling out. No, no, we had the falling out. Like, um, there's a whole situation that happened in Vegas last year when we were filming, and um, I like, I we we had a fight over something stupid. Like, um, and like why? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you. So this was so this was actually shown last season. Um, and he tried to open a bottle of champagne on MJ when she was passed out, and. I went and stopped him because I was like, that's not cool. You don't want to like throw a bottle of champagne on her. Like, you know, while she's sleeping in a mattress in bed, like that it's supposed to be her mattress for the entire weekend. That's just going to be gross. And you just not, it's not cool. Yeah. So I stopped him from doing that. So the next day I get a call from him. He's like, girl, um, I can't, I, you just, you can't do that to me. You can't send, you can't stop me. It's my life. I'm on TV. You don't know what you're doing. This is good for the scene. I was trying to pop the, you know, the, the cork for like the end of the scene. And, and, and that's what we do. And I was just like, okay, TV or not, that's just like a shitty thing to do when you are, when your friend is sleeping in bed, passed out in bed and you are trying to pour champagne on her. Like, that's just not cool. 
like right. live or TV. Like I don't, I don't know why he wants to see that. Like I don't want to see that, you know. So then I just reacted like just a, a natural person, not thinking about anything about the cameras because, a, why would you do that unless you're like you know trying to like, I'm the thirsty one, right? I'm the thirsty one that's trying to hug like scenes, right? But, you know, so since you're so boring, <laughs> you have nothing to offer, <laughs> you have to do that to make yourself look cool on TV, right? Right. That's how I look at it. And that was yeah. what the falling out was over. That's, and then he said that I'm trying to be like, um, I'll take all his friends and I'm, you know, I'm just, chum, you know, being so chummy with all his friends and that's not cool. With, he's not cool with that. And I'm like, well, what's the problem? You meet people in life through like other people and that's how you become friends with other people that's yeah. how that's how it works you know what i mean so i met everybody through you and i'm friends with everybody and we all get along what is the problem like yeah. why does it have to be an issue where i can hang out with you i'm fine i can hang out with mj and be fine i can hang out with golden last time and be fine i can hang out with destiny and be fine like it's no one's it's no one has an issue we all can hang out together we all can go and like part of the group can hang out together it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't, like, I didn't think it was an issue, but I guess for him, it was an issue because he's like, I'm supposed to be your friend and you are not. Like, huh. Yeah. So You're then supposed that's to be his friend, but don't become friends with anyone in the group. Right. So then that's how I was the shit sir and I was talking shit and like all that stuff that they're saying is just like not true because I wasn't doing any of that. And then, so, I mean, why do you think Adam was sending, I mean, was this, like, was he hitting on you? Like, why else would you say, you know what I mean? Like, I honestly, I don't know. I think it's super weird. Um, I think it's weird. I think he has a fetish. I think that's, um, he gets What do you off. think his fetish is? I think, I don't know. It's some, some weird, like, internet fetish that he has. I think, A, he gets off and talking to people like that and, like, exposing, like, a, like other people's porn and mix it mix, gives him a rush. I don't know. I guess I think it gives him a rush. He likes doing that because it was just, it's, he, he does it with everybody, but not everyone is just like getting the personal and text messages. Like I was getting like, imagine like Mike getting these messages. Like, you know, they, I'm sure he's not getting, you want this yeah. dick in your pooper. Like you want this dick in your face, like messages. Cause I mean, that Mike, Mike's not gay. He wouldn't take a dick up his ass. No, did he send you a dick pic? Not of his own, but it's like other people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean, does he send this to straight guys and women, or just gay guys? Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like, I I brought this up. I don't. It wasn't shown. Um, I mean, like I was. I told Mike. I was like, "How would you like it if Paulina got text messages from a straight guy? Like, hey, you I... want, you want this dick in your pussy? Like, he would." go insane right so why is there a double standard when there's a gay couple and they're sending another text message to a gay man that is not interested about these text messages that's just like not okay right and like you know if someone feels a certain way that they were sexually taken advantage of you technically should let them speak their mind and i honestly felt like it was getting to a level where it was just really not acceptable and i had other friends that were friends with adam that were telling me the same thing. That they're like, oh my gosh, she's making us uncomfortable. So that stack of paper that I sent, gave Reza before he flipped out is because of all these text messages from other people that I put together. And I'm like, well, look, look, so-and-so said the same thing about your husband. It's not just me. You came with receipts. Receipts, I always, I always come with receipts. <laughs> I, if more power to you, I am all about the receipt. Like, listen, if you're gonna claim something, have the backup. So those, those papers were from everyone. I mean, from everyone and like text messages from like Adam, like from Strip Jenga, like receipts. Like, I mean, it was receipts from everywhere that I had. Like, I don't just, I, there's no reason for me to make any of this up. There's no reason for me to lie about it. And it's, and, and you can see in the show that Adam even admits to it. So it's kind of like, okay, like, so this is not that it happened is not even an issue. It did happen. It's now that, like, the, the, the point of the focus is now turned into, like, who done it and what is the motive. And that, like, shouldn't even be an issue. Like, it shouldn't be that question. It should be, like, okay, my husband is a creep. He's texting everyone, like, these nasty text messages. I should look into that and work on my marriage because I'm about, I'm hanging by a thread. And instead of, like, 
you know, nourishing the thread so it becomes a rope. It's not so it becomes, you know, like a more sturdy string for you to attach on. You're literally attacking everybody. Right. Like almost like you're saying, like, why is no one upset with Adam in this whole situation? Like, why is a 30 year friendship involved? Like, no one's really turning to Adam, it seems. At least exactly. not yet. And you know what? Like, the, the thing is, like, I I think they'll you'll see more of this in the coming episode. Um, I you know I talk about it, so you see this. Um, so I don't want to get into too much detail, but I do you know point some light into this when I, you know, on my upcoming scenes. Because we see you coming up. So I mean, MJ admitted though that she knew yes. about these texts, and she knew that you were going to meet Reza to confront him. No, because she was in the hospital at that point, so she didn't know that I was going to meet her. I mean, meet Reza. But did Destiny know why you were showing up to confront Reza? Yeah, I mean, so she knew, right? Yeah. Where are you? So, I mean, obviously, in the MJ and Reza feud, I mean, I don't know what else we're supposed to call it because they're doubling down on social media every other day. You come out on Team MJ. I am always 100% will be Team MJ. I love MJ. She's my sister. She is my best friend. I love her. She's, you know, we're working on our relationship together, on you know, our issues. I don't have anything negative to say about her. She's not a bad person. She's not what, you know, Reza is saying about her. She's not what Gulnasa is saying about her. And definitely, I don't even care what Destiny is saying. Like, Destiny, it means nothing to me. So, okay, so Team MJ, so your relationship now with MJ and today is decent. Yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're good, we're good terms. We're not like before. I hope that we get there at some point in the future. And I'm, you know, you know, God willing, it will happen. Um, I love her. I love her. I have nothing negative to say about her. She's, she's a really good person. She's been a good friend to me. Um, she's been there for me. And, you know, it's like one of those things like where, I can tell her anything in my life. Like she knows everything about me and I tell her everything. So, um, and that's how the kind of friendship I have with her because I, I like, I, I trust her and I love her and it's just, you know, it's, it's hard when you, when you have friendships like this, um, when there's a, like a, a fight, like, like how massive of a fight this, that this whole show has created. I honestly, miss my friendship so much with MJ that I, looking back, I don't know if I would ever even do this show. Like, because I, my, her, my relationship with her means so much to me. To, to see that, like, to deteriorate because of the show, it's really hard. And I, I, I just, um, I would think twice. Would you think twice about confronting I Reza think, with the receipts? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I yeah. take another sip of wine. Come on, just one. <laughs> I mean, yes and no. I don't. I don't. You know, he needs to know. I'm sorry. He needs to know. So it's not like I did anything wrong. I told him the truth. And he, it, like sometimes, you know, people try to do what my shirt says. Try to do. Which your shirt says hiding the truth. And then I do this. Okay, so it said hiding the truth. Okay, wait a second. Everyone slow down. And then there's a zipper. Now, we're going to have to take a picture afterwards of the, you both ways. All right, <laughs> let me take up this picture. Hold on. And then you unzip the zipper, and it says hiding the truth. And then it says is is not the solution. Now, where did you get this shirt of yours? I'm taking pictures right now. I got it. Um, I, I got what I need. <laughs> I got, That's amazing. I mean, I had to like throw, you know, th I just, this whole thing, I got it actually in, um, at Zara. <laughs> really? I love Zara. Yeah, I love Zara. They have like really cute stuff. So you didn't get it just for this exclusive breaking sit down chat with no, David. No, I, I actually <laughs> had this shirt and I was going through my closet to see like what I was going to wear. And I'm like, oh my God, this is perfect because we're this is, this is kind of perfect. It's, it's amazing. I appreciate you dressing appropriately for me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I just threw on a t-shirt, so I am not so appropriately dressed. Um, That is actually perfect. So in this whole destiny feeling like she was set up by MJ to kind of get in the middle of it. You're totally, you're rolling your eyes. 
you give a shit. You don't give one shit about Destiny. I, I, who, who is she? Who are we talking about? <laughs> this Destiny Rose from the People's Couch who? now from Shots of Sunset. So <laughs> I think you guys don't speak today. Who? Okay. <laughs> I feel like most of the people feel that way, possibly, yeah. about Destiny. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really, really, really tragic to see what kind of a train wreck she is, honestly. Like, to see what, how she is, um, what a liar she is, and how pathetic she is. Like, it's so interesting to see all of that. Like, and to actually really get to know her through this job. Because I thought I had a best friend in her, and I was a really amazing friend to her. And she literally fucked me over. I mean, does everyone except MJ kiss the Reza ring? I mean, has everyone really stopped talking to you since Reza yeah. sent this text? Yeah, everybody. Everybody's afraid of him. I don't know why. Like, he has been. So I don't know, like, why everybody is, like, all of his... I mean, like, it's just, he's just, it's just funny to me when I see him on TV and I'm like, he's such a loser. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm just kind of you like... say it. <laughs> You're yeah. amongst friends here. He's such a loser. Like, I'm just like, he, you know, he, like, and he makes fun of me. He makes fun of my, my, my physical appearance. And I'm like, bro, like, what are you, what are you smoking? Like. I have no problem with your physical appearance. <laughs> <laughs> what is he smoking? What is he on? Like, please get back to earth because where you at is not earth. <laughs> I think, yeah, a lot of people would. Yeah. So, yeah, um, so <laughs> that is, so that text was sent and that was it. Like everybody, I mean, do you think, is it like what, to what extent do you think the show plays into it? Is it like we're on TV and that's the most important thing to us and that plays a factor? Or is it like, we're just really good friends with Reza? Or is it like, we are desperate for our own jobs and that plays a factor? I think a combination of everything, um, like with the with the whole thing with Destiny, um, I can't talk too much about this because hopefully I'll have the chance to talk about it later. Um, um, I just think she was up, she was like scared with her position in the show, and she did what she did just to save herself so that she could be in good terms with, like the self-proclaimed main star of the show, like, who is who he's not. Like, he's, like, cracking like a toothpick this season. He's in had multiple locations. <laughs> not a clean break. <laughs> what else did I want to say? Why, why is, why is Gigi, like, starting out the season, like, why was Gigi, I mean, other than the fact that they've always had, like, a strange relationship, but, like, why is Gigi so angstful towards MJ. Um, I mean, that doesn't even seem like it's related to this, per se. I honestly don't know what her issue is with MJ. Like, I don't know. Because MJ is always very supportive of her and is very nice to her and, like, never talks negatively about her. So I don't know what her issue is. Um, They had... um, you know, a falling out with the whole Shalom thing that happened. So uh, ever since then, I think they've been like, kind of like not on like good terms, but it's not the worst that they have done to each other. I'm sorry. Like they've done, they've done worse things to each other, like in se- seasons before. So yeah, I uh, can't even imagine like when that little incident, like of last season, like causing all of this hate towards each other. It's just, I don't know. And what's going on with Mike now, because I just saw, I mean, there's stuff on social Mike's now. Been on like, repeat. Mike's been on repeat since like season one, new season, new girl, new relationship, and then start repeat again, rewind, repeat, rewind, repeat. So I don't know. Hopefully this time he's actually like stays with Paulina, like, and this becomes more serious than his past previous um, relationships. And hopefully his businesses are um, like his business, you know, what he's doing right now doesn't follow his previous track record. But I don't know. Like, I don't know. Honestly, like um, Mike and I never we were never really like that close anyway. Um, 
I don't know. I, I don't know much about Mike's relationship with Paulina, so I don't want to say anything that's negative. She's lovely. I, I've met her. She's very fun, and I like her, and I think she's great. She's a great woman, So and she's a good mom, so I want um, the best for them. I hope that this time Mike is actually, like, serious with her, um, and... What does serious to... mean? Faithful? No, like, no, no, no. Like, I, I, I honestly, like, don't want, I don't want it to be catty and bitchy towards Mike. I'm not, I'm not doing that at all. Like, I think he's, I think he's great. I just, we, him and I, like, I was just saying what his, you know, previously with his relationships and then, yeah. no, I'm not trying to say anything negative about him. I'm not doing that. But I just want to make sure that, like, you know, he takes this, you know, she's a great girl. So I want her, I want them to, like, be happy and try to be actually, um, in, you know, have a future together. Let's that not be sense. like Morgan, not be a, a Jessica. <laughs> I hope it'll be, it's just Paulina. She's Jewish, and, like she's Persian. The, and, like his parents, his mom loves her. So I think that that all like is in their favor. We like to, a nice Jewish Persian to, girl. Yeah, to have like a good relationship. I think that's, it's all, that's what everybody wants in their life to have a good relationship. And I wish them well. And I hope that it happens for them. So, totally. Um, yeah. What about like the whole thing? I mean, I know you're team MJ and you are friends and repairing a relationship. What about the whole Tommy, Tommy going to Reza's? How do we feel you know, about honestly, that? Honestly, I, I don't think it was that big, that serious. He's just going in there and threw some like pottery around, like whatever, you know, on like your outdoor furniture, like a dirt on, like that's just not serious. But I think um, the action that Reza took to, create such a pro like take make a legal action against all of this is just pathetic it shows what a like a like a horrible person he is and what lengths he will go through to um like to be relevant on tv you know like you don't just get to do that you don't get to like go destroy your friends husbands life and take them to jail and like send them to jail and like do all this like um, I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard it hasn't been shown on the show, but the, uh, the tabloid talked about it like, you know, the, you know, the jail time, like the, you know, this restraining order, all of that. It's just so unnecessary and it's so unwarranted. And it's just like he, you've done you, you, you sit on a pedestal and you try to like, um, you know, look at yourself like I'm being the bigger person here and I where you've done worse things to other people, including myself. Like you assaulted me on on camera. You assaulted me, put your hands on me, and I didn't press charges on you. And you're calling someone else a criminal. You are a criminal. You just never got charged for it because I never pressed charges against you. So that's like if somebody to go sit there and sitting in a like a giant plexiglass house and throwing a big boulder like that. I mean, come on. Do you think Adam and Reza will last as a marriage? I, I they I don't think so. I mean, I, would you want to be in that relationship? Like, I mean, they just don't even seem like they're in love. Like, you could tell when people are in love. You could tell when they and like their relationship is authentic and it's it's and it's real. They just don't like Tommy and MJ. They're like literally in love, right? In, oh my god, he is like they're in love. Yeah, I mean, so. Their relationship is authentic and it's real and it's on display and theirs is not. It's hidden and it's it's not to a point where you're, you know, you can like, it's so ridiculous to see this. And I'm it, like, Adam would be a different person when Reza's around and when Reza's gone, he's completely a different person. Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like it's completely like one versus another. Like someone like, it's like a devious person comes outside. And he's trying to be let, like, you know, his master is gone and now he's out to play. So, you know, he's allowed to put free time because <laughs> his master left him. <laughs> what do left you think Adam <laughs> sees in Reza then? Like, why do you think he's there? I don't know. He's, I don't know if anybody sees in Reza. He's a terrible person. He's a terrible person inside and outside. He bitch lost 40 pounds. Gained it somewhere else. <laughs> This goes back to his comments about you and, I guess, whatever he said physically about you. I forgot. I mean, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Can you hear me pour? 
I can hear, I, I can see you pour, but for all the listeners, they can hear you pour. What type of wine is it? It looks like, I, I like that wine bottle. Um, it's it's from Italy. It's um award-winning wine. It's um, Voga Italia. It's Pinot Grigio. Oh, it looks like a really, like, first of all, that's the most amazing wine and here. Let me check out this just be with your wine. <laughs> this is like, no, I mean, it's a really cool wine bottle. I like it. That's and actually a really perfect. Look, I just drank all of this today. Like, it's fine. You're amongst friends. Oh my gosh, it's not even noon yet. <laughs> it's listen, <laughs> just between us girls. Um, what was I gonna say? I mean, do you think? Okay, we'll take two more final questions and then we'll wrap up. You and I can still chat off, you know. But my engineers will be like, wrap this shit up, David. Um, but we could still chat online. Um. Because, I mean, we're both quarantined in and what the fuck else are we going to do? <laughs> now, do you think, these are really the final two questions, really. Do you think this 30-year friendship is going to be repaired or do you think it's past the point of repair? I mean, honestly, if my best friend of 30 years took put my husband in jail, I don't know how I would forgive them. Because you can't undo that. Like, you can't go back and be like, please, judge, take his criminal record off because it's just permanent. Things like this, when you do to somebody that's permanent like this, it's just unrepairable. No matter how much of an apology you do and how much of a good try to be there for that person, I just would never, never, that's me personally, I would never take that person back as a friend to where that they were before. So I, MJ is a very forgiving person and she's very, very, she's very, she's a kind heart and she's so amazing. She, I mean, she's in this respect, she would be like better than me in, in ways that I would not even understand. So I don't know how she was she's going to repair this and how she's going to move on from this. And it's not just about her now. It's involved. Tommy's involved. Um, and it's just very, it's very, very sad. And it's very um, disappointing that a best friend of 30 years would do that to somebody. I am have been friends with them for four years. I didn't. I did not send Reza to jail. Okay, so like I even, would you if, if if that happened again? If you got anything thrown on you, would you do things differently? If it's Reza, maybe I'll send him shit in the mail. <laughs> There's companies that do that. You know that, right? <laughs> no, I did not know that. Um, and what, so now we're, I don't know how many episodes there are this season. I think we're like on episode 10, 12, I, I think 10, I, I forget. I think, I think it's coming up as 10. Yeah. Something like that. So I think we have a good half of the season left to go, but like, are you going to be at the reunion? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you should be. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I hope that I can, you know. I don't know. I just, you know, I don't know. It's it's not up to me to decide. No, it's not. It's not up to me to decide either, unfortunately. <laughs> um, my leading Bravo podcast, unfortunately, I don't work for the head of Bravo. Um, I think you should be. I mean, there's so many unanswered questions. So many know? questions that I have so many answers to. I know. Well... <laughs> First of all, we're going to chat online. Second of all, I think you need to come back on like as, you know, like during the reunion. And if the reunion is not, if you do not are on the reunion, I think this is where you need to just break it all down and give your side of the story. And yeah, talk. For like, sure. uh, yeah, for sure. I think that's um, when I'm legally uh, allowed to do that, I will go ahead and do that for sure. Um, you know, it's. See, um, I was very respectful, right? Like you told me there's lots of things you can't talk about. I get it. I didn't push you too hard. No, I mean, I don't think I said anything that I hadn't said before, so. Right. And, like, you just talked about things that we saw kind right. of on TV. Right. You know, you didn't. It's, it's, I mean, it's obviously I said some. I, I talked about what we've already seen, obviously, and I don't want to give anything away. I think there's so much you guys have to see. Um, I am seeing with everybody, too, so I don't even know what's what's being aired until I see it, so. I don't know what other scenes have been filmed that I wasn't there. So I don't know what's been, you know, everything that I've been talked about this whole season. I didn't know. Like, I didn't know there's so many things that had happened that, you know, I wasn't involved. And in. it's just. Are you, are you shocked? Like that just from something that happens in your real life that like, in a way you're at the center of like one of the major scandals in the fucking history of Shaz Asante. <laughs> it's crazy. I never expected it. 
to be honest, I didn't right. think it was going to get this big. I just wanted to like talk about what had happened. And I, any normal person would be like, thank you for this information. Let me talk to my husband about it. And then, and then that, that would be it. I never thought that this would turn into what it is now. I don't know anyone would ever think that this, this would be the way it is now. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah, a little bit, right? I mean, yeah, it's surreal. I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know. It's. I didn't. I'm obviously, like I said, like I was. I'm not, you know, in entertainment, and I'm, you know, but I have been entertaining. <laughs> so you have entertained a lot of people. Let me tell you. <laughs> now, before we go, but then we could chat afterwards. I have to do a screenshot of us. Okay. So, like, let's. I'm going to take a few. So, like, yeah, okay, you're pretty. You look pretty good there. I have to, I have to do more. Hold on. Okay. I have to sit back. Am I looking cross-eyed or am I good? <laughs> You're pretty good. I'm okay. never like. I guess I'll, let me do one more. I don't know why I'm coming out so dark. Let me sit over here. Hold on. These screenshots, I'm so out of it. I just figured out how to do this. And it's like my new thing. That's good lighting there. This is like much better. Yeah. That's bad. That's better, right? Okay. Yeah, that looks good. See, I'll I'll like send them to you. Okay. okay. They might appear in your chat history. So where can we all find you online? So you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Ali Ashuri. Um, so it's A-L-I-A-S-H-O-U-R-I. Um, and I'm going to be on YouTube. You're going to see a lot of videos of me. Um, I Let me actually read my description of my YouTube channel. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. It's funny. I'll follow you on YouTube, too. I already follow you on Instagram. Yeah, it's going to... I'm going to be posting some um, really fun stuff. Um I mean, that's a good use of quarantine. Yeah, because you want to make sure, like, you know, you have, um, you do something with your life. I totally agree. I am determined to come out of this. I mean, I've already done a lot, but I'm like, every day I want to do as much as possible. So, um, it's, so my channel is just called Ali Ashori, but it's going to be called um, Ali's World, okay? Um, that's, that's my cute. channel. Yeah. And it says, welcome to Ali's world where everything is a little kookier, funnier, and happier than everywhere else. <laughs> That's sweet. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So, and then it's going to be just a very fun, positive channel. Um, it's going to have a lot of, um, you know, fun videos that we can all relate to um, while we're in quarantine. It's, I think the world can, can relate to them. And it's going to be like a story that I'm going to tell. Um, it's, it's fictional. It's all fake. Everything's going to be just acting out um but it's very fun i'm really excited for it um i can't wait to share it with everybody that's perfect um that was amazing i will dm you we, okay. we can chat and keep in touch okay. um I'll, ha I'll have a glass of wine after this as well yeah, have a drink it's <laughs> i would have done it during this but I almost ha it's happy hour somewhere in the world right? listen it's 208 here so i'm like entitled i'll like dm you and we'll chat and you'll definitely come back on this was amazing yeah thanks for having me and i appreciate um you sharing my story and being interested in what i have to offer and um looking forward talking to you more when the, the show ends and we can talk everything me too you'll come back on and then we'll really hash it out and then we'll have like vodka so we we need to have like iv infused um alcohol <laughs> oh my god we'll do like a we'll do like a zoom so <laughs> yes. this has been awesome all right i'll like dm you okay all right thank you so much you're so welcome okay all right. bye, bye.